Welcome to Happily Ever Aftermath, the podcast where we discuss relationships in movies and our relationships with them. I'm Polina Grinbaum. And I'm Diana Rojek Sconner. Diana. Hi, Polina. How are you doing today? I am doing great. For the listeners at home, while we seamlessly kept our schedule going just fine. Because of the magic of your actual ability to organize things. Oh, thank you. Uh, wasn't fishing for a compliment, but uh, Polina and but I, you got one. we haven't seen each other in like two months. I know, it's crazy. So just we had to travel. run around the room in the circle, getting mm-hmm. all of our energy out. Yep. It's like, like, and then we had to get our stuff out of the cubbies. Uh-huh. Yeah. Take our shoes off. Of course. Sit in the... Um, Indian style. Uh, or was it crisscross applesauce? Sorry, sorry. <laughs> We have to undo a lot of things that we learned when we were younger. Yes, yes. <laughs> Crisscross applesauce. I, I had, I don't, I just sat on the floor. Yes. Yeah. No, circle time. Circle time. Circle time. Yeah. yeah. So that's and then we had it, and then we had some carbs. We did have carbs. Yeah. I thought you said carbs, and I'm like, what did you <laughs> feed me? Oh, well, I forgot to tell you. That was carp, shaped like chicken. Still pretty tasty. It was really good. Tasted like chicken. Oh, good. We're See, talking about go. Sab- we're talking about Sabrina today. <laughs> I don't think they made carp. The ADD is strong. With it's us so today. strong today. <laughs> oh wow, 1995, Sabrina. Yep. Yes. Not not the Audrey Hepburn version. Uh, if it was, that would have been very confusing because I don't think she was alive. Mm, yes. Or she looked fantastic, <laughs> and like Harrison Ford. <laughs> and I don't understand what's happening. All right. So, okay, there's so, none of that in this movie. So, uh, no, we did not watch the uh, original. We watched the remake. Mm-hmm. And here is the synopsis. Sabrina Fairchild, thank you, Google search, by the way. Uh, Sabrina Fa- Fairchild, Julia Ormond, is a chauffeur's daughter who grew up with the wealthy Larrabee family. She always had unreciprocated feelings for David, Greg Kinnear, the family's younger son and playboy. But after returning from Paris, Sabrina has become a glamorous woman who gets David's attention. His older, work-minded brother, Linus Harrison Ford, <laughs> thinks their courtship is bad for the family business and tries to break them up, but then starts to fall for her too. Because that's the way it's supposed to go in these movies. It is. Mm-hmm. It's a fairy tale. Important question. Yes. Have you seen the original? Yes. I have not. It is so good. This was my choice. Yes. Uh, This was actually, I don't know how it stumbled into our home. I just remember that after I watched it once, Mm -hmm. I watched it many, many times. Well, many, 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 uh, it was VHS, Uh, many, uh, uh, various parts of it, many, many times Mm -hmm. because in the very, very beginning. So, so Sabrina, the chauffeur's daughter. Yes. Is sent to Paris to work for Vogue magazine which is pretty amazing mm-hmm. uh considering i guess the larrabees have connections and they're able to send her out to yeah. paris she is and the reason that her father wants her to go to paris she is, because... is i will i will use this word she is obsessed obsessed with david in in ways that are unhealthy behavior inducing yes it's, it, i was watching the first five minutes of it i'm like oh this is scary yeah because she knows david is a playboy who is seducing another woman at one of the family parties and she's like okay now he's going to go to this place to seduce her here now he's going to go to this spot and i'm going to go watch them do it and i'm like oh i'm glad i'm not seeing this they yeah and she, yeah she basically hides out in a tree she climbs a tree which she does in a very long skirt yeah that's and that impressive. was another thing that i was worried about i was like right. <gasps> And imagine you're at a party and then somebody falls out of a tree yeah. and then it's just like, bam, no, right I kept behind waiting you. for the tree falling, the, which never happened. Well, I, I, I hate putting it this way, but they, so the score, the music is done by John yeah, Williams. It is. And I'm like, it's very, and it's, it's, it's extra Williamsy. And it's, well, not, not just that. I'm just like, if, if somebody out there with a little bit of editing talent decided to take the music and instead <laughs> making it kind of like beautifully whimsical and just like oh this is so sweet and to just something more along the lines of the you know it yeah so the the whole thing is that she's supposed she's just in case anyone freaks out about that that was from death becomes her i didn't realize it until it came out of me just comes it came out of yes these references just pour out of her um Yeah, so basically the whole thing is that she's kind of mousy and um, like kind of, you know, wears baggy clothes and has bad haircut and of course glasses. Very withdrawn. 
yeah. uh, very introverted and has not seen much of the world. Although the world that she has seen is very rich. Very rich, yeah. And she's the only kid, like, yeah. kid in that. There's not like there's other, uh, I guess, there's other uh, housekeepers, children. Or, uh, yeah, there's, there's no, no other. No employees, yeah. children. Which is crazy because she goes in the beginning, she goes through this whole list of like how many gardeners and how many maids and how many cooks and how there's like. The tennis courts. The tennis courts. The a, indoor tennis courts. The, uh, yeah, and like the pool and the outdoor pool and there's a. Uh, I'm like, at some point, there would have been other, somebody would have had another kid. You get your own Paul Giamatti on this, on the grounds. <laughs> yeah. Just to, because that's, well, if I had unlimited money, I'd want my own Paul Giamatti. Yeah. If that was, if that was available to yeah, me, that would be great. <laughs> it's just so interesting to see him there. It's like, oh, hey, there he is. There he is. <laughs> and he's only in like two, one or yeah. two scenes. This it's is, very sad. I'm like, I'm like, oh, good. There's Paul Giamatti. Oh. Oh, he's gone. And then every time I was like, maybe, oh. <laughs> It's just it's just interesting to see yeah. there. Well, it's 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 kind of like that. So your your various you know actors are just popping up this movie in kind of small roles. There's some great ones. Oh I mean, no, 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 totally. But I, okay. I mean, Angie Dickinson is in this movie. Right. I just want to say, and she's fantastic. And well, what if what if the role? Okay, so all right, here's the deal. Yeah, Sabrina in love with David. David, playboy. I don't like him. I don't like him mm. at all. Uh, Harrison Ford plays the older brother Linus. He is the workaholic older brother that, of course, takes care of the business, and the mother's involved in the business too. But that's and you okay. see him at parties. So basically, yeah. you see there's a contrast between mm-hmm. um, between Linus, yep. the Harrison Ford character, yep, yep. and uh, David, and David, and you basically you see. So Linus at a party is basically like working or or using the party to work. He's yeah. either and of course. David is enjoying himself. Of course, he is reaping all the financial benefits and, you know, what have you. Doing none of the work. Yeah, exactly. You're at these parties. You get to meet these amazing people. You have asked... The the mother's birthday party happened and... (laughs) The mother's birthday party had some great set pieces. So there's lots of parties in this movie. So the mother has a birthday and Linus is just like, uh, you know, they're talking about presents that they Mm -hmm. get the mother for her birthday. Oh, I got her a portable fax machine. He's Mm -hmm. like, oh, wow. Uh, What about you? I'm like, I got her a mini Picasso. Just a little Picasso. Just a little Picasso. Just a little Picasso. And and, and he goes like, how much did that cost me? And he's like, oh. So it's a good dynamics of just like this one's the, not the screw up, but the uninterested one. Mm -hmm. And this one is the... The, the overachieving brother who is all about work, 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 yeah. work, 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 And work, like work. every minute is, mm-hmm. you know, is, is sort of time optimized is, for Time is work. money. Yeah. Time is money. And and he's quite like m- mercenary. And, oh, and then some. Yeah. So, and then that so Sabrina goes to Paris. And in that time, David meets a doctor named, crap. It's Lauren Elizabeth. Holly. Eliz- uh, yes, Elizabeth. Tyson. Uh, Tyson. Very important because... Not of the chicken fortune in this movie. No, weird. It's... it's um, So the Larrabees are some sort of like... They they um, invested in fiber optics. And so that's where they made their big money. They yeah. had a corporation and there they was took, lots of money. They took several millions and transformed it into billions. Exactly. And now there's this potential for a merger between Tyson Electronics. And this opens up a really great... One of the parties, speaking of which, when they should be celebrating mm-hmm. instead... It's the birthday party. One of the many parties. I can't... I can't but it's, keep... it's her birthday. That's what's well, great. It's well, the mom's birthday party. There's, well, like I said, there's multiple parties, so it's hard mm-hmm. to tell which is which. This is the one where Linus... No, this is after... Okay. So this party, you got Linus is speaking to all of these potential investors, and it's a flat panel TV. This is 1995, Mm -hmm. so it's indestructible. And David has announced that he's engaged to her. And Lauren, uh, Elizabeth did this amazing, like, you know, martial arts maneuver on him. It's just like, you know, oh, I'm so sorry I had to work late. No, no, you're just so good. You're a pediatrician. Then why won't you marry me? Yeah. Uh, (laughs) And then it's just like that. And she's like, well, it's like, wait, why don't I? Yeah. And I love his version of marriage. It's just like, you know, it's that thing where you hang out with the same person and you sleep in the same, and you bed. Sleep in the same bed. She's <laughs> like, well, then I accept. And he's like, oh, and he's kind of sad about it. He talks to Linus about it. And then in the middle of the conversation line, Linus pulls out a gun and mm-hmm. starts shooting the flat panel TV. Yep. <laughs> and there's this other scene in the party where he decides to take a blowtorch mm-hmm. to the TV <laughs> And then he lights a cigar and with then, the blowtorch. Yeah. And then, and then, uh, and another, he brings another group of investors and takes a, uh, 
uh, fire a pine, uh, like a fireplace poker. Yes. And the, the other the thing I kept thinking is oh, exactly why does a flat panel have to be that indestructible? Like how often does it come? Up? That's the beauty of this technology. Technology, uh, Polina. Is that it doesn't have to be, but it still is. <laughs> that's oh. amazing. See, and this is and why also, I haven't made, I haven't turned my 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 hundreds into uh, into billions. thousands. <laughs> my my dimes. Yeah, my dimes. My dimes into my, th- my dimes, dimes into twenties into, into three dimes. Yeah. <laughs> So the point we were trying to get here is that he's all focused on this technology and he sees this opportunity of his brother stumbling into a relationship with the daughter of the owner of this company and this Mm -hmm. merger. This is how he can get front and center to create this merger for a billion dollars. They keep saying that. But I I just I do want to say for the record billion with a but David is actually in love with those. He did. He 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 met her in in, at a a, a party that was unrelated to the mm -hmm. family. And he just, you know, I guess a kid had fainted and he took the kid mm-hmm. in and, and then, she was the, the attending. Yeah. And he's, and, and of course, Line is ever so cynical. How's the kid doing? So Elizabeth is coming by <laughs> and I want you to make me look, make yeah, me look like good. Lie front. if you have to. He actually, he actually says lie if you have to. And Linus sees this as potential. The whole time this Sabrina is in Paris and mm-hmm. she's still pining over him. And I feel so bad because watching this as a younger girl, mm-hmm. I get it watching it as, as an adult as an adult it's just like i don't mm. feel good i i need that influx of weird uncomfortable hormones for me to sympathize with her. i think it's true it's like looking as a distance it's much harder it's upsetting borderline stocky if not stocky yeah. itself. well okay so basically she goes to paris and right beforehand she tries to confess to david that she's gonna miss him while he's gone but mm-hmm. it's actually Linus in the room, and that yeah. sets up this big thing where it's very dramatic. I didn't. That was one of those scenes that I didn't watch because I knew she was going to embarrass herself. So I just know, all right, she's running now. Okay, I can start watching. Yeah, again. no, it was, it was terribly cringy. And that, well, so she goes to Paris, and basically the other thing is, I just want to say for to her, in in her defense, mm-hmm. she's basically lived in this world of like you know, there's people who kind of love her, and she gets to kind of do whatever she wants, like mm-hmm. she's clearly kind of the you know everyone feels sort of like the the household feels responsible for her right yeah. and um and everyone's really you know nice and sweet and take care of her and then and then she goes, oh my God, she she goes to like she's basically an intern at Vogue. British Vogue. I mean, sorry. Well, French. obviously, French Vogue, um, <laughs> Vogue Paris, Vogue in Paris, and she's um, like a photographer's, or actually, she's a stylist assistant, and and it's brutal. Like it's really, really, really hard. And that part of being the like intern who can't do anything right, and she doesn't really speak French. Just to point that out, mm-hmm. um, she steps on a contact, and lens. it's the first time she's like on her own. Mm-hmm. She's in Paris. Brings up a very interesting question. Yeah. But finish first. Yeah. And so it kind of like makes sense that she was pining for home in some way because she is like alone in a city. Mm-hmm. Um, and they do address this later. But she's like alone in the city and she is having like a, a hell of a time at work. Um, and and in her room, she puts like a picture of him. What's a gap ad? A gap ad that he's in, yes. And and then slowly over time, she builds up enough experiences and she keeps putting them on her bulletin board and mm-hmm. they start to crowd him out, which I thought was like a very nice visual touch. Yes. Um, but I, yeah. Well, it's here's like, my question for you. Yeah. We'll get back to that. Mm-hmm. Uh, first of all, if anyone was worried, but I went, oh my God, really quickly, I meant... Uh, she is sheltered, n- not amazing Wonder Woman, where this entire area is focused on her, and she's the only child in there. Yeah. So, but uh, but what I was going to get at is how old is she meant to be? I been well, I was actually wondering about how old Harrison Ford is meant to be and how old she is meant yeah. to be. Oh, that that's uh, that's part of it. That was like kind of hard for me to watch. I to can be tell honest. you how old they actually were. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's there's like a 22 age. A year age I mean, it's clearly them. supposed to be a fairly large age difference, but I don't like, think how so. old? Because like, because she said that when they were children, you know, she was afraid and he helped her, and then David had lessons. I imagine she's younger than David. She's younger than both of them. Yeah, but, but it's, maybe just like by 
eight years? Eight years, even 10 years would be fine. Yeah. Well, that's that was my assumption of what I was trying to do. Kind of makes sense because if, if... Like they if, were both younger. She, yeah. It wasn't like she was five and he was, you know, 18. Yeah. He, you know, he was a 22, that yeah. kind of thing. So I, I felt it was, I don't know. I, I think feel he be- was, suppo- I get the feeling he was supposed to be old because he, he was been like running the business for a long. His father had passed away. Yeah. He'd yeah, been exactly. running the business. His mother is not young. But does that mean she's, he's supposed to be like maybe 45 and she's supposed to be 30, like 20? 20? I mean, she can't have been 30. She'd been living in this like, yeah. I mean, at some point she would have had to get a job. Yeah. She can't have been 30. I get the feeling she was probably like... That's why it's really hard to either tell. Either right out of college or right out of high school. Right. Because why else would they send her away for two years or whatever long it is? Right. To I mean, figure... I, it, the point is, it definitely raises some questions on the rewatch. Because, again, when you're younger, they were all older. Therefore... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it doesn't... Yeah, you don't really think... All okay, so, so that, that... I found this movie kind of cringy for that. But... but what, yeah, tell me about your, what was it that you found in this movie? Okay. If I had to take a guess, uh, this was one of those movies that my dad rented when I asked him to go get something and they were not, and, and, then, it was, and then it was out. Yes. <laughs> he, that would happen a lot. He, he was good that way to where he would always bring something home. Yeah. Dad, I wanted Ace Ventura. And but, yeah. he brings home Sabrina or something like that. That was very common. Yeah. That was like a very common experience yes. around this time. Also, I think I remember that's how I also saw the movie Fatal Instinct which was the <laughs> Fatal Attraction Basic Instinct parody movie. I watched that movie a lot, too. I shouldn't have. But there are certain <laughs> parts... There, well, no, some of those movies will, will definitely take you by surprise in that it'll still make you laugh. Um, but something happened recently. I went to go visit my parents, and family was there, siblings, mm-hmm. uh, nieces all over the place. And out of nowhere, I can't remember what brought on the conversation. Mm-hmm. Odds are we were talking about Star Wars. And... <laughs> Oh, I, yeah. Okay. I was talking about Solo. And my mom goes, doesn't your father look like Han Solo? And my sister just went like, whoa. No. <laughs> and I'm, and I, I was thinking about them like, well, if my mom's trying to make a parallel of like how my dad has a certain swagger about him. Mm-hmm. And for, by the way, this, this episode is now dedicated to my father specifically there, well no, no no there's more to it uh so i think there's a certain swagger and, mm-hmm. and a kind of a dashingness yeah. and a bit of sarcasm Aww. that i think my mother sees and she thinks of han solo Aww. but it also explains because i remember she used to say that when i was younger and i think that what uh... is what attributes to the fact that i never had a crush on han solo because han solo Oh, see, it's I like, totally had a crush on Han Solo. Well, I didn't have crushes on many, but when your yeah. mom is actually saying, it's just like oh, your dad. Oh, totally. Then, no, no. It that definitely, would, that like, turn it off. Yeah. That, that definitely no, squashes no, that. that would be bad. So that part kind of... I think that's cute. I oh, think it's I cute think so, she's, too. So maybe, maybe he brought it home because he's like, I just bring home Harrison Ford movies to remind her. No, my dad's not that... Um, that, no. Not no, that no, no, no. He, he, he lets his um, everyday be the reason that Aww. she would fawn over him Aww. you know like the laundry yeah he's the laundry oh. he's the laundry doing kind of guy nice yeah exactly oh and the ironing go dad jesus the same the same conversation or the same dinner the mm-hmm. conversation came up where my dad said so i listened to your podcast <laughs> yeah this is why this episode is dedicated to my father. He mm-hmm. listened to the I thought you said it wasn't dedicated to your father. No, I said he was. This, oh, it this, is. This, no, oh, this, I'm sorry, I misheard you. No, this episode is dedicated oh, to my father. because that's awesome. Because he said, so I listened to your to your podcast, and um, well, I'm like, which one did you did you listen to? He's like, the, the cocktail episode. I'm like, oh, okay. Ooh. Have you seen the movie before? He's like, no. I'm like, oh, I, I think that would have been kind of hard for you to follow that. He's like, yeah. I'm like, it's probably good to start with a movie you've seen. And he's like... Well, I listened to it, and I was like, I don't, I don't understand what they're talking about. And then I turned it <laughs> off, and I'm like, oh, my God. I am up there in the echelons of all the things my dad watches, doesn't gets, and turns it off. <laughs> Yay! I made it. You made it. I made it. I love that he made the effort, too. Oh, that's really sweet. So I'm going to look down the line to see if there's a movie that I know he He's has watched. seen or at least enjoys, and I'm going to, I'm going to. Dedicate nice. for realsies that one. To okay, him. you should. My my uh, Han Solo father. <laughs> but does, does he look like Han Solo or Harrison Ford? If if my movie were ever made into a life, I assumed that my father would have been played by Chevy Chase. Because <laughs> that's the better sarcasm. Chevy Chase in yes. uh, Vacation would make more sense uh, to me. 
Um, and also the important thing about Sabrina is this mm-hmm. is the first movie where I watched it and I thought Harrison Ford is getting older. And that did not feel good because when you watch Star Wars Ex- yeah. and you watch Return of the Jedi and you watch Empire Strikes Back on repeat and then you watch another movie, it's just like, whoa, what, ha- what happened? What's yeah. what's going on? Where's this blaster? Oh, he's got a blowtorch. That helps. So see, yeah, I was an indie. I was also really into indie, 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 Indiana Jones movies. And so this was definitely one of those Harris, like, you know, I was around the state, like Harrison Ford was mm-hmm. like, was actively a kind of a sex symbol when I was, when I was a teenager and also younger. Ch- also and check out our episode on working girl. Yeah. Check out our episode on working girl, which, yeah, um, because that's the fun loving. And I have to say seeing this, yeah. like, Goofy. cause I have I didn't see this. I, I, my husband and I were trying to talk about, we we're like, we feel like we'd seen this movie. And my only thing I can think of is that I saw it mi- soon after it came out on a plane. Okay. And I was like half watching it. That's like the, I because I can't imagine sitting down and I, I don't, it wasn't like a, I definitely saw this movie kind of mm-hmm. thing. It was more like, it's not unfamiliar. The parts that I enjoyed watching uh, is when Sabrina comes back. Mm-hmm. She's had her off-screen montage makeover. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, okay. off-screen. That's the other thing. So they film her pair of scenes, and she does discover photography, which yep. I think is really cool. Yep. And a boy, uh, kind of a guy, but she kind of, that mm-hmm. seems, I don't know. I can't even figure it out exactly what happened with that one. A guy who was... Uh, was able to pay attention he's the photographer Photographer. he kind of sees he sees what's going on he know he's well he even says you know you are here but your mind is somewhere else your mind is somewhere else who's smart enough to know that she just got some bad news which she did her Mm -hmm. father told her that david got engaged and she was definitely using that opportunity to just drown her sorrows in another person's skin which I mean, he frankly, a, the guy was great. He's yeah. a photographer. He's like took uh, took notice of her when she was yeah. like all mousy. Even though she, of course, she's not, Julia not mousy, She looks great when she was still um in uh, like very internal. closed off. Yeah, very closed, closed off. off. Yeah. So um, so bad news. She gets. Mm-hmm. She, but you engaged. never see the makeover. No, you never see her slowly like becoming like first. She like mm-hmm. finds you know she figures out how to wear clothes that fit her and like then next she gets yeah like my big factory like she doesn't there isn't even a one day montage there's just like mm-hmm. like she's been mousy the whole time and then suddenly bam sophisticated bam. yeah it's even weirder because she even writes the last letter to her father and she's still got the same haircut exactly and the same yeah we're like wait wait when did this happen yeah it's just like we're giving like you that's a-, a lot of clothes to buy very quickly yeah. I'm just like, quick, I'm leaving Paris. I got to look sophisticated. Yeah, totally. <laughs> she gets like a very dramatic haircut. She, you know, like. No, redder lips, go. Yeah. So, but I like it because she looks fun. She looks like just kind of transformed when she's back. Yeah. So she, she acts very chic. She accidentally runs. A little like too chic for 25. I'm like, why? Yeah, the 25 exactly. year olds like even then is like on a plane in a suit, like a full on suit. Yeah. And this a is the 90s. A pants suit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the suit. 90s. We've been wearing PJs on planes for a while now. Yeah, yeah. I know I have. Yeah. But I was like 12. Yeah. Well, of course, when yeah. you're 12, you get to work. But still, yeah, like, I mean, mm-hmm. we weren't quite into, like, mm-hmm. you know, but, you know, Juicy Couture wasn't far behind. She just got point. dropped off from some sort of public transportation. We'll say that. And she looked fabulous. Yeah. So she runs into David picking up the her, mini. Her, her posture is much better. Of course. She's learned to walk in heel. Like, a whole nine yards. The glasses. She runs yeah. into David she picking gets, up the she mini, gets contacts the mini Picasso, <laughs> and sure enough, even though he's in he's hesitant about marriage, but he knows he's in love with Elizabeth and she's an incredible woman. All of a sudden, it's just like, "Hello, attractive person, mm-hmm. can I give you a ride home?" Because the, if anything, he's looking at her and she's talking to him like, "Wow, it's so amazing to run into you. How are you?" He's like, "Well, you know me." Because the other thing he didn't is recognize that her. before she'd always kind of like freak out but she was super she she sees him she's poised and she's super poised which makes like very little sense to be honest and honestly it came kind of strange because she was poised and then she kind of falls back into it Mm -hmm. and i understand i understand Mm -hmm. that completely you see someone you haven't seen in a while you fall back into old patterns Mm -hmm. i'll be like that with certain family members of course certain things will pop out of my mouth i'm like where did that come from oh right 1993 that's where that came from yeah so you know that was pretty interesting you know, something I didn't ask in the very beginning when we got started mm-hmm. with the podcast, why is this movie over two hours long? 
Oh, I thought it just felt like it was two hours long. Cause I it, have cause no it, idea. It was. <laughs> it was two hours and seven it minutes. Felt long. Now, it, I have to say, like, the pacing of this movie is very bizarre. They called this movie a romantic comedy drama. I'm like, what? Drama? Coma- chromatic. Romantic, romantic comedy, comedy drama. I'm like, well, which is it? It's... I- it's a calm drum. I mean, I guess it's not like laugh out loud funny the whole time. Like there's a few little like It's a rom-com jokes. drum. Well, okay. Well, yeah. Well, rom-com drum. Zum. Zum. Um, zum, prom. zum. Prom. Zum. About a prom. Um, <laughs> um. <laughs> we didn't run off enough of our energy. <laughs> no, no, no. We should have We need recess. Um, I, yeah, it doesn't, because it's, it's very odd because some scenes, like some, some sort of stages seem to last forever. Correct. For example, I don't even mean scenes, but I mean like like the whole thing with her being in Paris. Mm-hmm. Like the her whole awkward, like uh, you know, trying to figure out what to do thing, like goes on for a long time. Mm-hmm. And then suddenly She's back. She's like yeah, she's like written one letter and she's like had a makeover. And I'm like, couldn't you have cut the whole like, au- like we know it's awkward, like we get it. And it was meant to be like the course of a year that she was But I gone. thought it was two years. Two years was uh, definitely the older movie. I, I got the impression. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because after I saw this one, I went online to, to, to see like little bits and pieces bits, yeah. of, of the original. Maybe thinking, that's when I'm well, like. I was try- well, I was trying. Because that to- makes more sense. That would be two years. I was trying to figure out, was Harrison Ford making his performance try to mimic Humphrey Bogart's character because this performance in, with Harrison Ford made me feel really just unhappy. And that's the only way I can describe it. No, did it make you feel un- unhappy when you saw it? No. Like, cause you saw something completely different back then. Yeah. Well, back then it was just like Harrison Ford in a movie and people fall in love. Hooray. I'm mm. not getting the full grasp of like everything that's going on. It, it was the basic like rom-com premise there is something happening there is a misunderstanding mm-hmm. misunderstanding yeah. oh no and then happily ever and after then they realize yeah that but then i realized wrong. he was really trying to pay her off and he wasn't even making any bones about it either in no, the he beginning. literally says like i'm trying to pay. the other thing is okay at one point he contrives to have his brother to like have his brother hurt himself mm-hmm. Well, to be fair, everyone knows exactly what he does, so it's pretty easy to to head him off in the past. Well, but still, like you, and then and then he poison he 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 drugs him. Yep. So at one point, he... somebody needed to drug him. I did not like his character. Yeah, but you're not supposed to drug him. Well, you're not supposed to drug him, nor nor are you supposed to like his character. But like this is I... business, Polina. <laughs> Greg Kinnear needs to stop talking. Okay, so basically, at one, you know, when Sabrina comes back, like the um, J- uh, David, fa- like you know, f- quote sort of unquote, falls, falls in, in love, love whatever. He's like, he's like, falls in love with her backside. Yeah, with her, yeah, well, just like, yeah, she's wearing this amazing dress. She looks gorgeous, Julia Armand. She's stunning. Mm-hmm. Um, and she, uh, and and then basically he like hurts himself, and then his brother calls the doctor and is like. In the middle of the night, mind you, and is like part of the shtick. You need to, yeah. It was like a cute joke, quote unquote. Which is okay, whatever. It's a fairy tale. But like, at one point, so he says, "Oh, yeah." So he doesn't like pain. So give him, give him painkillers. Yeah, like maybe something like morphine and klonopin. Like he like. Well, he was saying just like uh, you know, give him a you know some morphine with a combination of this. Uh, Oh, they ha- talking they, to a doctor. Well, he's like, they haven't proven that yet. Yeah. So he knows it's bad. And just like, you're you're telling a doctor, so you're trying to draw, this is like quite dangerous, right? The combination of painkillers and sleeping pills, you know, mm-hmm. in the past years, I've actually killed some people. And, and I don't think that's a recent thing. And I, it was just like, what? This is not... I can't even think this is cute. I mean, and if you really think about the the time frame, it's just like he's trying to. It's three to, days. It's it's three days. Yeah. So he he sits on the glass. He tries to distract so distract Sabrina by taking her to Martha's Vineyard. Yeah. To take photos of their thing, and they're on an island, and it's beautiful. Is it an island? Is it a peninsula? Mm, yeah, it's like a yeah. Fjord. It's a peninsula, I 
It's not a few words. I don't know. I make up words. No, I think it's a peninsula. God, I'm trying to remember. Yes, I think it's just a peninsula. Okay. Uh... Let's 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 move on. Let's okay. move on. It's a it's it's a it's a promontory of some kind. It's beautiful. It's very pretty. It's beautiful. It's an opportunity for him to try to seduce her, which all of it is just like what's all happening right now. All of it is right so now? weird. It's, and then she kind of goes between stupid. being like, I can't. I'm terrified of this guy. To like, like he's so charming. Teasing him. She teases or him like to she's like not afraid of him. Yeah, but then she goes into like I'm afraid of him, and then she like actually. I know this is not how it's meant to be. Mm-hmm. I read reviews of this and, uh, you know, like like that happened at the time and they did not mention this. I mean, I think one kind of mentioned it, but they more talked about how, oh, it added this like, th- it added sort of this drama because it was clear that he was having a midlife crisis and I'm like, really? oh, yeah. I'm like, okay, maybe, but I, that only makes it creepier. I thought he was faking a midlife crisis because she was saying, everyone needs to come to Paris. Yeah, you don't work. Yeah. Where do you live? Yeah. And that's the other thing. And then she's spouting off like, like she's so wise because she spent a semester abroad, basically. And like, you know, she, I mean, found, a semester, she saw some, but like, she said she's in she's Paris. Found and she found her bohemian life. Like she created her memes and decided to, you know, share it on his page. Yeah. It's just very, it's very, the, the whole dynamic like doesn't feel kosher to me. Like the whole time I'm like, it feels very, uh, you know, maybe it's just the lens of watching this right now, but I found it, and it wasn't just me. I was watching it with my husband. He kind of mentioned the same thing. Like, um, maybe it's just the lens of today, but to me, it, it, it felt very much of like, this is a man that has con- like power over me, but I have some power over him because he's clearly interested and he has... Uh, like an ability to make my career okay, he's putting me into several uncomfortable situations before they go to Martha's Vineyard together. Yep. yep. Um, that he he's basically like, oh, you'll just take some pictures of this house, but then then we'll stay here. Like I don't know if they stay. I, don't, I think they didn't stay there because they said they had one day. Yeah. But they then were... then he's going to have a pic. He's going to make me baked clams. Yeah. And. We're going to like bike through the town and this is a very busy day. Yeah. And, um, it, and it's, it's just interesting. And, and, and two days before he, she, he, he tried to, he tried to pay her off yep. and then, and then, um, danced with her in a like very private space in and a, then kissed her in a way that they both knew that that's what his brother was going to come down to do. And they were all recognizing it. She's just like, what's going to happen? But I know exactly what's supposed to happen. But then what happens? Oh, hey, now Linus is here. I guess I'm doing this with him now. Yeah. Wait, we all know Wait, what but... he does here. How is this not even creepier? Yeah. And then he kisses her and she, like very much like, and he's like and he in goes, a really weird, forceful way. It's actually. all in the family, he says. And then he says, oh, I know. I wrote that down. I wrote down two things. Poison your brother and it's all in the family. And yeah. then I just cu- I couldn't anymore. Well, what's weird is that all in the family is is done, is said twice in the original of the clips that I saw. Mm-hmm. So I thought, okay, well, they're trying to take these little pieces and put yeah. them in there. Yeah, well, so actually, nice. according to the thing, I mean, I hadn't seen this movie. I actually really, really, what I saw, I really enjoyed it. Like The original? Yeah. Okay. I think it's, I mean, it's probably just problematic, but like, I don't know. I just, Audrey Hepburn is just delightful. And there's more like where you see her actually transform, which is really fun. That's probably the part I really remember. Um, well, this fall, this movie and falls more. really high into the realm of, I think the reason I kept watching it was because it was Harrison Ford. Mm. Like, I think the reason I liked it. I kept it thinking is, it was Paris. That was where, because mm. there was some like that, fun Paris, there was great Paris scenes. Oh, sure. But it didn't, it didn't process that for was me. Not I, I wasn't interested. Uh, no. Yeah. I was a like, get as far away from, I'm like a, I want to travel and be in, in other lands kind of thing. And but like, well, going back yeah. to working girl and talking about how, when I watched it and then I rewatched it, I'm just, I just forgot how goofy Harrison Ford is in this movie. And I love yeah. it so much. I looked at this entire performance in Sabrina mm-hmm. as the same as that really uncomfortable scene in working girl where he, a big reveal is happening and somebody's leaving in tears and then a business meeting has to take place yeah, yeah. afterwards and, and him just going like, <clears throat> okay. okay, well gentlemen. And I'm like, yeah. that, that's that tiny moment where there's a big emotional thing. And then he has mm-hmm. to go back into professional mode is him in this entire movie. And I couldn't stand it. Yeah. Sabrina. I think you need to rescue me. Yes. And I'm like, can, can you 
just not be so <laughs> can weird. We, can we get some Melanie Griffith in this movie? Something. <laughs> or something for s- your age. Yeah. I, and, I mean, and, that's not your mom. And the whole time, Julia Ormond. And he's kind of even creepy about, like, he's not creepy, but he's no, clearly he's in love with, I mean, yes, he is creepy. Sorry. Mm-hmm. I mean, he doesn't, he's also clearly, he um, he starts talking about David's fiance, like, yeah, like you don't deserve her, and then he lists like all of her fine qualities she's in beautiful. that way of like, and she's smart, not in the way of like. I mean, you can tell the difference between someone who's like, oh my god, this is a catch, to like, mm-hmm. I think about her. I think he was trying to pull off the robotic. I am just a a business person, and I do not live a life. People are not people. Because his mom was coming in, yeah, and he even says, and rightfully so, he's like, do you really? Did you? really think about the times when we bought out a company and the lies yeah, that we you destroyed there. and you were at the hairdresser yeah and you know eventually she got to the point where she's just like you know he's like you know where did you i did not teach you this and, mm-hmm. and she, i don't remember exactly the lines but it was a little bit better than no i didn't teach you this yeah she basically not that bad. i do like the mom in some oh scenes. she's great she's, Maybe she's, she's just, actually written pretty well i just need to talk to her sabrina he's yanking your chain yeah can i say that can to I a say woman that to a woman <laughs> <laughs> she's great and actually their relationship is fantastic it's like pretty nice like and i i like the, the thing that makes me want to see the movie but then I, when i read the reviews it said oh it, the script bar like was yep. pretty close to the original i was like oh i don't know if i do because actually most of my problems well okay actually well, most of my problems i think i just listed but like the I found the script very like strange and awkward. Like it never really picked like the I'm being clever. Like they're like in retrospect now that we're listing all these things, I'm like, oh, those were like cute. Those were really cute setups. Like there, there were some were. cute, funny things, it, but it felt kind of strange because when they were having their conversation, but it's almost like somebody came in to write those yeah. like separately, right? Well, her character would go and she would say all these little things like she's jabbing him, but then she goes back to being terrified of him. It's just yeah. like no, which, that was the thing. It was like yeah. which one are you? Are you? It, are you it didn't s- feel organic like uh-huh. like oh i have that youthful hubris yeah and then and then she'll look at his face yeah. see that he's not amused and go like oh you know yeah no it was just like it was like i'm suddenly not i just i don't know i couldn't land it which is why i'm really really it. curious about um mm-hmm. which is why i was just curious like when you watch it, it was just you know what what sort of ideas did it give you you know what was the the kind of falling in love bit. I need to find me a billionaire. <laughs> That's he, may, that actually may be the most useful romantic advice that we have gotten from movies on this podcast. I need to find me. A, well, no, I you, need to find me a billionaire who can be like, I can put you on a concord. I can put you on a concord on the concord today. I well, they can't now. Well, the well, concord no longer flies. Well, but. to be fair, spoiler. Uh, as much as okay, so David finally decides in the end because there's so many missed uh things where sabrina tries to see him and when they do finally meet up and she talks to him by that point her you know linus has already told her like go away with me to paris yes i do i do want to go with you to paris because they've already fallen in love with each other and then she sees david he's just like hey how's it going she's like no we're not gonna do this all this stuff happens literally in the course of four days like three or four days yeah like I think I'm being. I think you're right. Yep. I'm being generous when I say was, four was, days. It was the overnight. She flying, comes back, and then she goes and takes. And the then pictures. they have a party the next day, yeah. and then, and then, it's, and then she. Well, he does move fast. He is a businessman. He does He's trying to get the merger like taking place. He and does. Poor Elizabeth is like out of town while this is happening. Oh yeah, and so, then she comes back, and I yeah, yeah. It's just that so whole thing. in the end, David realizes that he, as much as he like has been completely occupied with sabrina mm-hmm. he decides you know that he realizes his brother is in love with her mm-hmm. and he needs to confirm it and elizabeth comes back from her conference a little bit pissed off because he hasn't been returning her calls but mm-hmm. he was kind of uh but he was sedated, drugged yes, at, the sedated time. <laughs> at the time and so uh he finally decides that he's it he may was, not be that he's not that into you it may be that he's been drugged by his brother after sitting on a wine glass there's more to this um <laughs> but but make note because i watched a lot of other clips to get this the wash of this movie out of my off my tongue okay i'm so relieved no this this I movie like hurt really? me to okay, watch okay. again i was just like why is this over two why hours long put, yeah. why is this happening what's wrong with harrison ford was he on botox the whole time <gasps> That is the only explanation that makes sense. I mean, to me. his cheeks were just down. He smiled a couple of he times. Was, he also looked extra jelly in a way he doesn't now. Like I said, he looked older than usual, and I don't like saying that. But no. I just I, okay. So, what? What? Harrison, we're very sorry. 
no, he's fine. He's, he's worth billions. Yeah. Uh, you know, both Linus and Harrison Ford are worth billions. He's fine. <laughs> Phew. He's happily married, I assume, <laughs> and angry in his Whatever's interviews. working for you, Harrison. And it's hates good. his Star Wars legacy. Whatever. Don't care. It's what I, See, I'd hate this legacy. Well, okay. So in this movie, in the end, David, it turns out he's more business savvy that he lets on. And he decides to finish off the merger, marry Elizabeth, and then sends Linus to go be with Sabrina in Paris. Despite the fact that he told Sabrina, hey, we're going to go to Paris together. And then because... He realizes that she's in love with him. He says, I can't do this to her and sends her away like that. Instead of going mm-hmm. with her to Paris and then leaving her there after all the paperwork has been signed, he decides to just tell her the truth, send her on her way. She chooses Paris. And it turns out her father has been financially savvy enough to listen to Larry Sr.'s mm-hmm. financial moves and accumulated over $2 million to give to his daughter. Mm-hmm. And he has this line that says, you know, me and your mother always be- wanted to give this to you and mm-hmm. $2 million really exceeded our expectations, but, but you, you always exceeded, exceeded ours. Mine. And I'm like, how? Oh, my God. She's, like, very mousy. It doesn't do much, and you had to force her uh, to Paris. Uh, yeah, I thought that, too, but it was such a sweet nope. line. Nope. Yep. Okay. But, yep. yeah. So, if anything, I love the movie for at least giving us the last minute. Um, he decides to marry one of the other people on the staff, you know? Yeah. She's like, oh, that, that money you clearly, made, and you couldn't tell us how was, to do was that. Clearly in love well, marry me for my money, then. That's not funny. Then marry me for love. Bam. Mm. It was sweet, but they, they really cut the shots really fast well that was the thing i wanted more i actually like went back I'm like, like i had to i was like no no i want to watch this again because i want to feel okay you, well, <laughs> that was like the only i was like these people are appropriate like they seem appropriate together i just want to see one well she would appropriate hold his hand, marriage you know? yeah. it was just like you know well they clearly of... just and you'd see them like you there was a couple like you know all of the the um households work workers yeah. like ha- you know having dinner together um, downstairs. Uh, so, so after, well, uh, yeah, this is a, I didn't go ahead. And you see them like interacting and you realize like, you're like, Oh, she's in love with him. Like, well after, okay. So I mentioned this before. And after that was a great I, Elizabeth Franz who's, or Franz or I don't oh. really know how to say it. When I was done with this movie, I went onto YouTube and I tried to find clips of other movies with like the really quick, you know, cuts of just like this scene where they do this, this scene where they fight, this scene where they make up, this scene where they are happily ever after. I'm just like, mm-hmm. I need a movie that's going to help me out. That'll make me feel better than this movie. Just made this made me, made me feel really uncomfortable and, and upsetting. And it's going to make for gr- great content tomorrow, but I don't feel good about it. <laughs> I was glad. Cause I, I felt, I started, I had this feeling of like, I'm like, oh God, this is going to be one of those things. Like, you know, like, uh, like my big fat Greek wedding. Mm. Um, except now I'm like, oh, actually, I compared to this movie, I like my fat, big fat it's, Greek wedding. It's, it's um, got more charm. It's got it's well, it's got yeah, it's just not as nearly as there's nothing creepy about it. I love it, but there's, it's not as creepy. There's no charm in this movie. There's no charm. There's so li- I mean, she's very charming. I wasn't charmed by her. So she's I, interesting. Yeah, she's lovely. But mm-hmm. I was not charmed by her. I was not charmed by her, and I don't. But I. To attributed that to, I mean, I don't say no. Actually, I, I was don't even know what charmed. to attribute it to. I attributed to the fact that I was like, well, she's not Audrey Hepburn. I didn't even have that comparison, and we're both that's falling true. on the same You're page. Not like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah, this and the thing that shocked me is this movie actually got very much better reviews than I was than anticipating. I, like, it's like a sixty-four percent of Rotten Tomatoes. Roger Ebert gave it a three point five out of four. Yeah. And I didn't even want to read the rest of it. I'm just like, Oh, no, I read that review. I was like, this eh. is not. I didn't understand. He's the one I think who, I gonna. I don't, I think he may have been the one who said that the, uh, the thing about him be having, sure. um, having a, like a midlife crisis. But I, I think we should that. get to the fun part in this one, especially. Because well, now we can really. What's funny is that typically I wait until our conversation to really pinpoint it. But mm-hmm. as I was thinking it last night, I'm just like, <sighs> all right. Well, the musical sting where they're having the Moroccan food together is where John Williams is trying to tell me this is when it's happening. I'm not yeah. going to listen to you, John Williams, because this movie is not conveying it adequately in your score, despite the fact that it was like nominated or possibly won an Academy Award. Uh, yeah. I think it got, I think it was just nominated. Yeah, was just despite nominated. the fact that this movie is up for Academy Awards, I'm just like, bleh, 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 bleh. no. Um, the moment that he fell in love with her is when she was hugging him when she no 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 okay he is in love with her 
when she's hugging him and saying, you've made me so happy. And the second he makes the decision to say, I'm not going with you. This is what's, this has all been a lie. That's that moment right there. That's his moment. What's hers? Well, you do yours because I forgot. I can't, I, I have to say, I can't find one. Oh, I remember now. Uh, she fell in love with him after they got back from the island and they had their cute clam conversation and, you know, um, I think she fell in love with him when they were about to leave. Uh, he had confided in her that he didn't understand what happened with David, why he just one day stopped coming to the office. And I think she fell in love with him when she decided to tell him that she knew why. Yeah. And the reason was, is that she once confided, uh, David once confided in her father that there's no reason to him come to the office anymore. Why does he need to be there? They have Linus. They have Linus. Yeah. yeah. That's when she fell in love with him. Um, I think it's when... And I'm rushing through this because I don't care. <laughs> I think she, like, yeah, I think I think she fell in love with him when she saw him actually try to eat Moroccan food with his fingers, is my theory. But, like, I'm not standing behind that theory and I want to rush through it. Um, I, did, 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 I think he... I, Any point after the I first think, 24 hours I think could when make she sense. didn't... Yeah. I think she, maybe he fell in love with her when she wouldn't take the money or he started to. But which, then he realized... Which time? The first time. <laughs> Good girl. He actually said that to her. Yeah, he said, good girl. Why she fell in love with him after that? I don't know, because <laughs> none of this makes sense. Um, and so and the funniest thing is they do, like, the, they do, they do, they have a dinner montage. Which one? Oh, the Like, when the they Moroccan have Moroccan food? food? Yeah. And it's, but it's just their mouths moving and, like, him laughing. And, and I, he takes off his glasses. I told you, that's, that's when John Williams was trying to get us to. Yeah. And it was like, I was like, this is a chatting montage? This is, wait, this is our first chatting montage. Dessert. Dessert. Um, I think she, uh, and I was like, the whole thing I was thinking was, so she's basically a 20... Something. Two-year-old girl talking about her year in Paris and how she found herself there. Like, uh, that sounds hard, like, that sounds... like. A terrible, Hollow. terrible, terrible way to thing. So maybe he did fall in love with her then because anyone who could live through like three hours of that who's not 22 is, is, it's a sign of love. You make me feel young. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> All right. So next question. What do you think happens to them? So so we leave them. Well, after he's they're... basically his his brother's taken over the yes. family business because it turns out he's been paying attention all this time. Well, he did have a, a he went to law school. But yes. he, he didn't he's not a lawyer, but he also went to business school. Yes. He he's pretty damn smart. He just kind of stepped yeah. back because you always have a sibling that overshadows you. Yeah, yeah, that, that's the thing. He's like, "Oh, you know, this is a pattern." I'm like, "He actually got all the way through law school and business school, which I couldn't do." Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, when you're rich and, you know, can do all that yeah, that's true. It could have taken years. Oh my god, maybe this, this whole thing was meant to be a hostile takeover. <laughs> oh my with god, his he's father been in law. this the whole time. With his father-in-law. <gasps> oh my god. Do you remember? Okay, there was a scene yeah. where, when he talks to Elizabeth and he goes, I'm going to tell you a story and then how is the story going to go? Yes. And that's when... And in the paperwork, and it gives me the raise I so rightfully deserve. Yeah, and then Elizabeth is like, you know what? I too, I got into... I actually wanted to go into business, but my dad was like, had this crazy, so I wanted to go into something completely different, like medicine. So here's how we're going to do this. Like I actually, this, this way we're going to start, okay, we're going to start a foundation, you know, and like, like a, a research hospital with this. But I think, yeah, I think that's, I think you're right. That's the only, this is the only possible explanation. There was this kind of like uh, comment that, Patrick Tyson made mm -hmm. where he was just like, you know, and the other offers we've been made, Elizabeth's you know, father. Yeah, Elizabeth's father, you know, and the other offers we've been made, you know, we would be allowed to take this cash offer stock options and we would be able to run the company without any over oversight. And I'm just thinking, wow, this all just kind of came at me at, at once. So can I just ask, like, he has this company and he is just basically allowed to do whatever he wants with all these billion dollars, There's no shareholders, nothing. I don't know how business works. Well, anyway, uh, uh, okay, so what happens to them after? So now he's ba so basically well, after, after the hostile takeover. Free, after the hostile takeover, he's free to like pursue love in Paris and basically have no job. What happens? That's the hard part. Yeah, after they're done making out in front of like kind they, of the they've Apple been up Tower, all night. 
Uh, no, no, no. This, remember the next day where they're just kind of kissing in front of the water? See, it, that, that looked like so Dawn. That looked uncomfortable. It did look uncomfortable. Every time they I, kissed, I felt bad actually for Julia Armand. I did too. Every time, yeah, like they kiss. Well, you notice that it was like the first kiss, and then the last one was like kind of a kiss. Him. Yeah, yeah, and then the kind of a kiss, and then it was just the the, the hers was just like a bunch of hugs. And I'm yeah, just that's like, the thing. I was did like, they negotiate for that afterwards? Just like let's just hug each other. And then other. and then there was a moment at the at, you know that that's supposed to be the happy Paris thing where you see them making out, and then she pulls away, and then she smiles at him, and I I literally relaxed, like I felt my shoulder like. Like, okay, she's not being taken hostage. And then my next thought was, oh, my God, Stockholm Syndrome is a thing. You know? <laughs> like, I don't, anyway. think, it's, I don't okay, even think it's that so far. What well, she is now in Paris with, like, two point something million dollars of her father's money. Mm-hmm. Uh, she now and has, her rich, her extremely and her rich, rich boy, lover. boyfriend, mm-hmm. lover. With, oh, God, don't, I know. don't, don't call it that. <laughs> um, this is what made me really sad afterwards, that despite the fact that he ran away from home, He's not going to be happy there. He's going to start looking at a couple of things. He's going to be like the way my husband and I are. Just like, yeah, we're going to go. We should go on vacation. We're going to be spontaneous. No, no, we're going to go to Hawaii and we're going to do this. And then I realized, well, if we're going to go to Hawaii, but we're not going to like fall into those traps where we go and we see all of these things and then we look at it and then it's just like at the end of the day, we're exhausted. We're going to go and we're going to read and we're going to enjoy the beach. Wait a minute. If we go and do that, it, it's just I'm not getting anything done. And if I'm just going to sit, why you would tried I, that once. why would I fly out to somewhere really, really expensive so I can just sit on my butt and do what I can do at home? I will say, I'm going to do Hawaii some laundry. has a very, it's a very nice vibe, but we did the same thing. Like we, we've done that. The one time we're like, we're just going to have a, we're going to have a beach vacation. And we're like, we're like, this is great for three days and then even then we got antsy, but it's fine. It's but I know what you mean. It's like, well, we, we, we. We did other things. We we're there for two weeks. You we can't be a corporate there. raider. And then just go Let's to be nothing. Honest. And then and then just go on to just relax. You can't go. It's the opposite of going to, you know, it's like you can't go from 60 to zero. He's going to watch her do these things. And then it's going to be like, oh, this was interesting when you were telling me the stories. Doing it in practice, this is not, this is, this was fun for like two days. Also, like basically she is, has to focus on her photography career. As, well. And um, that's what's going to, well, I guess she, she doesn't have to focus on anything because she's independently wealthy, but. But also she needs she to wants create to. her photography exactly, career. Which is going to take some time. Yeah. She needs to get a portfolio. She needs to make some, well, I guess she does know Vogue. So that's a start. Yeah. But I, th- I think what's going to happen is it's going to go nice for a little while and then he's going to get antsy. And then he's going to start working some more and then they're going to meet and he's going to fly in on the weekends and fly back. And then technology will get better. You know, he is Tyson. He's 95. I mean, we've got, we're only a (gasps) few years away from. You said he's 95. (laughs) (laughs) Mean Polina. Sorry. Uh, (laughs) He looks 95. I mean, no, it's 1995. And and like what? You're going to have a cell, you know, in a few years, you're going to have the internet. Right. But then he's going to. I mean, technically already have the internet. He's going to keep working. He's going to keep working. He's going to keep working. They're going to have like a problem. And then they're going to have a kid to try to fix the problem. Mm -hmm. And then he's going to keep working and then keep working. And then she'll get some help because she'll still want to keep doing her thing. But eventually it's going to become the, his work was too important and she's going to mm. stay in Paris and raise the kid and the kid's only going to speak French. And then finally someone in this movie learns French. And then they, mm-hmm. and then they, and then they drift. It's going to be like a relationship that maintains in that. Sure. They'll no, they're not going to get married. They're going to have like, just they're going to progress and then they're just going to like stop seeing each other. <laughs> Um, I think they're going to, I think basically what's going to happen is they're going to have, have this like two, a son. Yeah. I don't know why. Just think that. Huh. Yeah. What's going to happen to him? He's going to be like four years old and his parents will be not together. That's as far as I got. Four years old. Okay. Um, <laughs> poor kid. Well, I mean, you know, he's, he's got like a love, he's got a, you know, a, a nice oh, yeah, his, mom, like, you know, and, who's and millions and, and lots of like money and, and she's going to meet somebody else. And then that. You know, yep. I'm sure it's going to be fine. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's better than having a father that is, you know, always going to be absent. Yep. I mean, that's not better. 
Anyway, that's complicated. Forget I just said that. Sure. Please. Um, I didn't mean to make light of something that's much more complicated than I make it sound to be, but um, that's kind of what the podcast is about. He's going to have the workaholic father that is living in the United States and comes to visit like once a month. No, no, no. Once every six months. Oh, I'm going to go with him once every six weeks and then just get on the conquer. Right. Oh, that's right. He does do the overnight stuff. But he's also going to be like on his laptop while the kid is at a yeah, while he's totally. well, not at this. He's not going to make it to the soccer yeah. game. Yeah, there's going to be lots of presents. Um, yep. And I think like the rest of the family is going to adore Mini the Picasso because like when they go, I think they're going to spend summers there. Because I, okay, I don't think you're going to have kids. I think it's going to be much. I think basically what's going to happen is, um, he is going to uh, he's going to like they're going to have a few let's say they are going to have some happy months while he is like at first it's going to be kind of antsy, but he's going to kind of, you know, cause he's going to get over it. Um, and he's going to actually like, he is going to enjoy it for a little while, but, mm-hmm. um, then he's going to get, you know, sucked back into the work because, sure. because basically something's going to come up or he's going to realize that there's been this hostile takeover. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's probably, probably totally going to happen. Totally ran with that. Um, and, and I think what's going to happen is basically over time, like she's, he's going to get more and more and more during this time of like, uh, kind of, you know, I am going to treat pleasure the way I treated business you know like I'm gonna do these things I'm gonna go to museums I'm gonna you know take class I'm gonna take French and um he's gonna become more and more controlling of her life and the age difference is gonna become more and kind of more judgmental and Mm -hmm. the things that he thought were kind of charming and flighty about her and he's gonna start trying to give her you know advice about her career okay and that's going to be okay at first, but he's not going to re- like understand what's I mean, he's going to be jealous of the, of like other, you know, men who kind of come into her life that she needs to, um, that she it be friends because of her career, because of her career, but also her friends. And yeah. she's, and then, and then that's when it's, you know, going to go horribly wrong. And then she's going to realize, wait, I don't need to put up with this. Um, and she's in, you know, he's, he's going to go back home yeah, because he wants to be with his family and he's going to marry, you know, and then when he gets back home, there's going to be some, um, there's going to be some, he is going to be, his rough edges are going to be smoothed out a bit and there's going to be some woman, you know, society, uh, woman who's going to snatch him up and then everyone's going to be okay. So I'm going to give it a year, a year not they they don't have kids okay I, I give it a they don't they definitely don't stay together but they have a son that's part of it i like this idea oh All thanks right. yeah cool well All there right. we go that yeah, let's, that's, um, that's another movie down let's close that movie in mm-hmm. the books goodbye books <laughs> uh all right then so polina yes your choice for next <gasps> time you get the honor so i you know i want to i you know, we're leaving with a, a rather distasteful Sydney Pollock movie, and I would like to watch a Sydney Pollock movie that I really like, um, and uh, called Tootsie. Okay. Um, it's in the, in the it's somewhere in the eighties. I don't remember why, but it's got Dustin Hoffman. Mm-hmm. It's probably also problematic, but hey, let's give it a shot. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I, it's it's about it's about a man who dresses as a woman. For a job. For a job. So, hey. Um, there you that's go. That's timely. And so, yeah, so I'm excited about to actually watch that movie. I was thinking of, like, of the, uh, I kind of wanted to do the 1950s Sabrina, but then I was like, mm. We would have been sabrina it out. Mm, too much Sabrina. But we can always revisit it. Totally. We've, we've, we've done remakes yeah. and sequels and what have yeah, you before. Yeah, maybe somebody, and also I don't have, like, that much of a relationship with it. Sure. Maybe somebody will. Yeah, exactly. Let's, let's do that. Cool. All right. So thank you so, so much. If you do, please <laughs> contact us at. Uh, well, contact <laughs> at hemecast.com. And we're also on Facebook at Happily Ever Aftermath. We're on Twitter at hemecast. H E A M C A S T. Yeah. And uh, you can rate review us. Uh, it really helps other people oh, find huge, yeah. us. And we really appreciate that. Oh, yeah. And the, then we uh, read them and it gives us warm fuzzies. And it's, it's fun because, you know. 
just amazing people like we're not, take the time to do that. Yeah, we really appreciate that. Uh, you can find us on Spotify, YouTube, Apple Podcasts. All uh, of the there was the other Google Play and uh, all the various ways to get us through your RSS feed. Mm-hmm. And uh, you can also check out a whole bunch of other excellent shows by hitting up the social media channels and doing hashtag Lady Pot Squad. Yep. All right. Oh, oh, oh. And mm-hmm. not too long from now, I am going to be guesting on the very great podcast, Six Degrees of Wiki. Ooh. Yeah. I think we, we fe- there was a promo last yep. episode. So. Yeah. They're, they're a great show. So if you were like, mm, I'm thinking of I'm listening to it and there's just another reminder. I had a really great time with Rosanna oh, and Nikki. So, good. so I'm, I'm looking Sounds forward to fantastic. that. I'm looking forward to it. There was lots of laughing. Oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> I can't wait. So okay. Um, so I think that wraps it up for us. It does. So see you next time. There we go. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye. Need an escape? Vanish into the depths of a magic forest. Head out on an interstellar repair mission. Travel back in time to change the future. Explore inside someone or something else. Meet dragons, werewolves, birds, bears, aliens, mermen and a man with a fishbowl for a head, all in 10 minutes or less every week. Tune in to 600 Second Saga for your weekly science fiction and fantasy escape.